Well, good evening. Let's try that again. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> it's so good to be in worship with you tonight. I'm Lindsay, the pastor here at Asbury, and we just love to be able to celebrate this service together. I don't, I don't know about y'all, but I was taught whenever I was young that you do the important things first. You eat dessert first. You, okay, maybe not that one, but, um, you know, like you hold the door open for the person behind you before you keep walking away. You say thank you for your food before you eat it. And for me, at least, and I think for many of us, uh, Christmas actually begins the very first thing, the most important thing, is the worship service um, on Christmas Eve night, uh, whenever we join together and we remember uh, that Christ loves us so much. And, um, and so I'm grateful that we get to have that moment together. I hope you kind of take a collective deep breath and just appreciate the moment that God has given us to reflect and to say thank you. We're going to begin our worship service tonight uh, with Joy to the World. So I encourage you to stand either in body or in spirit and join us in singing this song. Go ahead and take a seat, and I'm going to ask the McFadden family to come forward for the lighting of the Advent wreath. <laughs> Today is the final day of Advent, the season of expectant waiting. We have lighted the candles of hope, peace, joy, and love. Today, we light the Christ candle. Like a woman waits for her children to be born, hoping, praying, excited, we wait for Jesus. If we haven't met him, it's these sins that things are not as they should be, cause us to learn and wait for something more, something better. If we haven't met him, haven't had him in our hearts, we wait for him to peel back another layer of himself for us. We wait for him to peel back another layer out of, of our hearts and price even deeper. We wait for him to make all things new.
and on this day so long ago he came. The wedding is over. The son is born. He came to us still when we came to him with open hands and hearts. We is, he is here. Our hope, our life has come God with us. And so tonight we light the Christ candle for our Jesus. The light of the word has come. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us so much that you stooped down to become one of us and that we might know you. We want to know you more. Come, Jesus, come. Amen. Please join us in singing. Let us pray. Dear God, we come before you today and we're thankful and we're grateful for the birth of your son, Emmanuel, God with us. Lord God, thank you so much that we can be in your presence and Lord, that you are amongst us. And I pray this evening, God, that we can experience, God, what the true um, message of Christmas is, God. Lord, by you giving, giving us an example of generosity by giving your only begotten son for us, for all of humanity. We thank you and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we love to see how the kids bring the Christmas story to life. You know that there's a big difference between reading something or seeing something and then actually embodying it for yourself. And we hope that by doing this tonight, that this is a, a story that, of course, sticks with these kids for their entire lives long. So we are proud to present Operation Christmas.
The angel greeted Mary and said, The Lord has blessed you in a special way. He is with you. Mary wondered what kind of greeting this could be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. God is very pleased with you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son. You must call him Jesus. The Lord God will make him king like his father David long ago. How can this happen? Mary asked the angel. I am unmarried. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come to you. The power of the Most High God will cover you. So the Holy One that is born will be called the Son of God. I serve the Lord, Mary answered. May it be happen to me just as you said it would. And then the angel left her. As Joseph was thinking of divorcing Mary, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. The angel said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. The baby inside her is from the Holy Spirit. She is going to have a son. You must give him the name Jesus. That's because he will save his people from their sins. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom he favors on his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone to heaven, the shepherds said one to, to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about.
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. As our children make their way back to their seats with their parents, will you bow your heads and join me in a brief word of prayer? Dear Jesus, on this most holy of nights, as we gather together and we prepare our hearts for this next part of our worship service where we have a chance to give, Lord, it, it reminds us that this night is so much about um, the ultimate gift, the, the gift that you gave us in coming to live here on earth in a form that we could understand, Lord. And so as we prepare our hearts to give back to you tonight, Lord, um, I pray that you would bless the gifts, Lord, but that you would bless the givers as well, God. We love you. Amen.
Thank you. Y'all be seated. Oh my gosh, Christmas is so exciting, isn't it? Is anybody ready and excited for Christmas cookies? Yeah, yeah I thought so. What about, is anyone excited to go looking at Christmas lights? Yeah. Oh, I always love that. We don't have anybody here who's excited to open presents, do we? Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh, I thought maybe so. You know, me too. I'm excited about that. Last year, one of my presents was I got a blanket, and I love this blanket so much, I sleep with it every single night. And you know what I've noticed about the presents that I really, really love? The ones that I love the most, I tend to keep them with me as much as I can. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like maybe if you get a wonderful present tomorrow, and then you hop in the car to go see a grandma or a grandpa, I bet you're going to take a present with you a present that you're super excited about, that you want to have along for the ride. Our favorite things, we tend to keep them really, really close. In fact, you know what? I have a few of my favorite things right here. Do you want to see them? Yeah? All of these things were given to me as gifts from at one time or another. Let's Oh, yes. My sunglasses. I love my sunglasses. Don't they make me look so fancy? Mm hmm. And, oh, my new phone. I love my phone. I have my phone with me almost every single place I go. And, oh, my goodness, the sweater. You know what? I got this as a present last year. And it's like so comfy and cozy. And I take it with me every time I travel. I just love this thing. And oh, it's fluffy. 
My brother knows that because I got it when I was six months old at my very first Christmas. And I have had it ever since. And you know what? My favorite things, I kind of keep them with me, you know? So except for that, well, Fluffy's here tonight, but she doesn't usually leave my house. So she doesn't go with me, you know, everywhere I go. And these sunglasses, well, I love them, but I usually leave them in the car because that's when I tend to need them. I don't wear them inside, really. And this sweater, oh my gosh, I love it, but I don't wear it in the summertime. Do you wear sweaters in the summertime? No, me either. And my phone, I know my husband wishes I always had it on me, but I got to admit, I lose this thing all the time. And you know what? Oh my gosh. Even though these are my favorite things, I don't have them with me all the time. Huh. Is there anything that I have with me all the time? Did you say my clothes? I hope so. My hair. I do have my hair with me all the time. Except for when I cut it, you know? Hmm. What do I have with me all the time? Wait a second. What's this? What is this? Do you th there's a present in here. You think I should open it? Let's see. What's inside? Ta-da! Wait a second. What is this? A stethoscope. I don't have this all the time. I'm not a nurse. I'm not a doctor. I don't even know how. What are you supposed to do with this thing? Is it like this? You do like, no, that didn't work. Okay. D does it go like this? Okay. But I can't hear anything. It's not making any sound, guys. Right here? Yeah. No way. Do you know what I, do you know? Oh my goodness. What is a body part? What is something that you always, always, always have with you? Your heart. I mean, I hope you always have your heart with you. Do you not have your heart with you right now? Okay, you do. Okay, good. You know what? I always have my heart with me, and I think you do too. And you know what? There are a lot of verses in the Bible that talk about this, like this one from 2 Corinthians that's up here on our screen. But what we learn from the Bible is that if we believe in Jesus and we, when we ask him to be our Lord, then Jesus lives inside our, our heart. That's right. So if you've asked Jesus to be your Savior, then Jesus lives in your, in your heart. Now, do you know what God's favoritest thing is, even more than my favorite sweater and phone and fluffy? Do you know what God's favorite thing is? That's right. Y'all are so smart. It's you. It's you. He made the greatest mountain ranges down to the starfish in the deep and all the way up to the Milky Way, and yet God's very most favorite thing that he made was you. And so, because Jesus wanted to be with us always, not just sometimes, but always, he gave up all the amazing things in heaven. And he came down as a baby at Christmas, hoping that as he grew up and he taught folks and he healed them and he saved us, that as we got to know him in the pages of scripture, he hopes that he becomes our favorite thing the way that we are his. And what that means is that even now that Jesus has gone back to heaven, do you know what he left? He left his spirit inside each of our hearts. That's right. 
And so in each one of our hearts is the gift of Jesus living inside. So that means that everywhere that your heart goes, who else goes with you? Jesus. You're right. Because your heart is God's home. And hopefully we make it a welcoming home for him. So there, here's my question. Is Jesus with you whenever you're in your house? I can't hear you. Yeah. Is Jesus with you when you go to the park? Yeah. Is Jesus with you when you're in your car? Yeah. And is the person in the car next to you in the lane? Yeah. Is Jesus with you when you go to the doctor? Yeah. Is Jesus with you when you have to be brave? Yeah. Yes, yes. Jesus is always with you. You know that song we just sang, do you remember what it said? It said, oh come, oh come, Emmanuel, that's right. And that is a word in another language. And do you know what it means in our language? It means God with us. That's right. That's one of Jesus' nicknames. When you get up to heaven one day, you can say, hey, God with us. Hey, Emmanuel. And Jesus will be like, hey, dude, what's going on? That's right. That is one of Jesus' names, God with us. And what that means is that Jesus is God with you everywhere you go, through anything that happens, 100% all of the time, because he lives inside your heart. And so my hope for you this Christmas is that that's what we celebrate, is the fact that Jesus loves us so much that he came so that he can live in each of our hearts and we have him with us forever. You wanna pray about that together? Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for reminding us that you are with us everywhere we go. That even the things that we really enjoy in life, we don't even have those with us all the time. In fact, sometimes we feel alone or even lonely. And yet, Lord, we remember that because you live in our hearts, that we are never truly alone. And we thank you for loving us enough to be with us. Thank you for coming at Christmas so that we can know you, Lord. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, friends, this is the time in our service where we sing Silent Night. So I encourage you to grab your candles. Our little ones, I believe most of them have battery-powered ones. They can turn those on. I'll be taking the light from, from the Christ candle. The ushers will come, and they will grab the light, and they will pass it to you. I encourage you to stand and join us as we sing.
Go with the light of Christ in your heart with you always, and Merry Christmas.